Let's learn nursing. Subscribe to the Sage Nurse and click on the bell icon to learn more about nursing. Welcome to my channel, the Sage Nurse. Today, we'll learn about something in microbiology that is normally present in every human body. So, those are not always harming. Sometimes they are helping in our physiological functions too. So, you may have guessed that the topic of today is normal microbial flora of human body. So under this chapter, we'll discuss the classification, the body parts where the normal microbial flora is present, the advantages and disadvantages of the microbial flora, and what are the species are present all over our body. So these are the timestamps if you want to learn the specific points. So first we'll learn what is normal microbial flora. It refers to the Population of the microorganism habitats in and on the human body. Like other animals, human body also harbors a wide variety of microorganisms over the skin and the mucous membrane. Only a healthy fetus inside the womb are free from any kind of microorganisms. At the time they took birth, they are exposed to the vaginal normal microbial flora. For every human being, this population is more or less constant. Second thing we'll learn the classification of the normal microbial flora. According to the presence, they are divided in two parts. First is resident flora, another one is transient flora. As per the name, resident flora remains the same in the human body from birth till death. The species remain the same. If we try to change this also, they will re-establish themselves in the particular parts of human body. They have some physiological functions too. So they are important to our body, but that we will study later. Another one is transient flora. Transient flora keeps changing with time. Some uh, microorganisms stay for weeks, some stays for days like that. So they keeps changing, that is called transient flora. They doesn't cause diseases generally, until and unless the resident flora is disturbed or changed for some reason. So they have less importance in human body. Next, what are the places where generally normal microbial flora is present? The parts are conjunctiva, then respiratory tract, then gastrointestinal tract, external auditory meters all over the skin and the genital tract. Next, we'll discuss the advantages and disadvantages of the normal microbial flora. First advantage is they prevent the invasion of the pathogen to the human body. When other microorganism is trying to invade the human body, this microorganism, this normal microbial flora, it helps us to prevent them from invading our body or they, are, uh, they act like a barrier. Second point is they activates our overall immunity system. They enhances our immunity system. How it works? It works by uh, as they are also microorganism or pathogens. So our body automatically activates the immunity system against them. But as they are not harmful, this immunity helps to prevent the another harmful organism from affecting our body. Next point is the microflora of the gastrointestinal tract. They synthesize vita vitamin K and vitamin B also, several vitamin B. These two vitamins are very essential for our bodily functions. Next point is they help in digestion of metabolizable substances just like uh, lactobacillus. Next is they help in maturation of the gastrointestinal cells. And last but not the least, they increases our body defense mechanism against the microorganism. And what are the disadvantages? First disadvantage is they can cause disease to our body. 
as they are also microorganisms they are also pathogens they have the capability to create our disease so if they are staying in a excessive number in our body or in some circumstances the number increases then it can cause disease to our body another one is when we are trying to diagnose so diagnose a disease we are uh, trying to find a disease in our client then uh, it, this microbial flora can cause some kind of confusion that uh, because there are some microorganisms which are having almost same properties so when they are having same properties this is difficult to find out is this a microbial flora or uh, is this a underlying cause of the disease next we'll study what are the species or what are the microorganism present all over the human body parts so first we will start from the conjunctiva conjunctiva is relatively free from the microorganism due to its high moisture next is blinking mechanically removes the microorganisms and another is lacrimal secretions which contains the lysosome lysosome helps to break the peptidoglycan chain which is uh, the basic of the cell wall okay next the nose the floor of the nose harbors cornibacterium staphylococci and streptococci along with this hemophila species and moraxella lacunata may also be present there after nose nasopharynx nasopharynx is uh, sterile uh, during birth within 2 to 3 days it develops the normal microbial flora which comes from the mother and the attendants of the newborn so we can consider the nasopharynx as the natural habitat for the pathogenic microorganism which creates the disease of the lungs bronchi and Um, alveoli also so as for example streptococcus pneumoniae okay within 12 hours of birth alpha hemolytic streptococci is found in upper respiratory tract and it becomes the dominant microorganism of the oropharynx and it remains same for the rest of life pharynx and trachea contains the same microbial flora as the mouth normal bronchi may contain some microorganism but smaller bronchi and alveoli are generally sterile next is mouth mouth is not sterile at the time of birth it contains the same type of microorganism present in the mother's vagina this is a mixture of micrococci streptococci and coliform bacilli within 2 to 5 days of life it is replaced by the microorganism present in the mouth of mother and the nurse in next we will study the gastrointestinal tract in 80 to 90% infants the meconium is the sterile and 10 to 20% are having few microorganism which may they have acquired during the birth so meconium is the first stool after birth within 2 to 4 hours of birth the normal flora establishes in the gastrointestinal tract this is mainly uh, established by the feeding uh, only so depending on the feeding the newborn is getting the flora changes if the newborn is being breastfed then the microorganisms are lactobacilli colon bacilli enterococci and if the newborn is getting the artificial feeding then the microorganisms are lactobacillus acidophilus and enterococci so as the food pattern changes and it is getting changed to the adult food the normal flora of the gastrointestinal tract is changed diet has a great impact on the normal flora of the gastrointestinal tract in the normal adult the microbial flora on the surface of the esophageal wall depends on the food and the saliva they are swallowing due to the low ph of the stomach 
virtually it is sterile only just after eating microorganism is present in stomach after some time they gets destroyed by the acidic environment if any person is having the carcinoma of the stomach or the stomach cancer or um, st pyloric obstruction then gram positive cocci and gram positive bacilli are found in the stomach also the number of the microorganism increases after duodenum to the colon in the duodenum and ileum enterococci and lactobacillus is the predominant but in the colon and the cecum the normal flora resembles the fecal flora in normal adult colon the microorganism is 96 to 90% anaerobic microorganism and only 1 to 4% is the aerobic microorganism certain gram negative microorganism from the gastrointestinal tract as for example e coli proteus paracolons can be present in the normal person next we will study about the genito urinary tract mycobacterium smegmitis is a harmless commensal found in secretion of both male and female genitalia except this gardnerella vaginalis bacterioides are found in the uh, penile urethra next we'll study about the skin the largest organ of human body as we know skin is covering our body and always exposed to the environment so it contains a variety of microorganism this microorganism depends on the personal hygiene of the um, person they the clothes they are wearing the environment they are living or working and the people around that person so if we do a culture of skin we can find diphtheroids staphylococci gram positive spore bearing bacilli gram negative bacilli and mycobacterium in the face neck and buttock we can find the hemolytic staphylococcus and streptococcus and if any person is working in the hospital area they are found with penicillin resistant streptococci if you find this video helpful please like share and comment and if you are new to the channel and want more detailed description of the topic of nursing courses please subscribe my channel thank you